Hello, welcome back to my channel. We have made it to the end of March, which means it's time for my quarterly reading stats wrap up. This is a video I've done every three months-ish for the past, I think about two years now. Basically, I just talk through my reading tracker, which I have a new reading tracker that I've just put together this year and I'm very excited about it. Talk through my reading tracker, the number of books I've read, the types of books I've read, what my ratings were, what kind of representation, what kind of tropes and genres I'm gravitating towards. And in the past I haven't talked about specific titles in these videos, but I think I want to start incorporating that. Not necessarily to talk about all of the books that I've read in the past three months, but I do want to talk about my top rated books and my bottom rated books. So without further ado, let's get into the stats. Like I said, I do have a new reading log that I've just pulled together in um, Google Sheets. And you guys, I think I might like math. I've had so much fun like figuring out the formulas and everything that I needed to, to make this book tracker do what I wanted it to do and it's going really well. So hopefully I will be able to um, incorporate some graphics for you all just to see what's going on, what I'm working with here. And if you wanna see a video of me detailing how I am tracking my books this year, let me know, I would love to do, I would love to talk about this spreadsheet with you, okay? I love a spreadsheet. Um, but for now, let's talk about the actual books in the spreadsheet. So for starters, I read eight books in the past three months, which is not a ton, but not terrible either. You know, I'm not one of these people who sets like a very lofty Goodreads challenge or lofty reading goal for the year. I'm not trying to read 100 books in a year. I am just trying to read books that make me happy, books that I enjoy, books that make me feel like I'm learning and growing and trying something new. So given that that is my goal, I feel okay about the eight books that I read in the past three months, which does seem to have been the case in the past quarter because my average star rating was 3.75 and I actually had more five star rated books than any other rating across the board. That's not entirely true. I had three five stars and three three stars, but uh, the formula said five was my mode. So that's what we're going with. Yeah, I guess that's okay. All right, anyway, I've also been tracking the diversity of my authors. I track how many authors of color I've picked up, how many queer authors I've picked up, and how many women authors I've picked up. Although in fairness, I do read a lot of women authored books, so I think I might stop tracking that because it's not really something that I need to pay attention to. Five of the eight books that I read this quarter were written by women, so we're pretty good on that front. Not so good on the other representation front, in terms of authorship, although I've also started tracking representation within narratives and I am doing a little bit better there. I do have some pretty diverse representation going on within the narratives that I'm picking up, just less so within the authors. Only one book that I've read this quarter was by an author of color and only one book was by a queer author and those also happened to be the same book. It was an own voices narrative so it had queer, BIPOC, um, and also fat representation, but it is the only own voices and the only BIPOC and queer author that I read all quarter, so I need to do better, definitely, going forward. But in keeping track of the key representation in the narratives I was picking up, I also had two books with really prevalent and prominent age representation, two queer rep books, two fat rep books, and one book with a neurodivergent character as well, like a neurodivergent main character. Also new this year and new to my reading tracker this year, I have been keeping track of the genres and tropes that I'm gravitating towards most. I have had this theory for a while that I kind of gravitate towards different genres, certainly at different times of the year. So like in October, November, I'm gravitating towards dark academia and that, that sort of darker aesthetic world, um, which makes complete sense. I have felt in the past, like in particularly the beginning of the year, January, February, I don't know if it's because because it's Valentine's Day or if it's just because I'm cold and I want to be cozy and warm inside but I have felt like I gravitate towards romance and a little bit towards fantasy and I wanted to check in on that and I was right. Romance was definitely my top read
red genre for Q1, which feels a little bit off brand, but also like it totally fits with what I thought it was gonna be. Romance followed closely by literary fiction and nonfiction. But funnily enough, my top tropes that I was gravitating toward were actually not romantic tropes. They were non-romantic relationship tropes. So like the found family, intergenerational friendships, those types of tropes. That's what I'm gravitating more towards in the books that I'm picking up, which is just kind of funny to see, I think. I think, personally. Anyway, moving on to the review portion, as I mentioned before, I want to talk about my top rated and my lowest rated books for the quarter. And I think I'm gonna start with my lowest rated because I don't really wanna bring the vibes down at the end of the video. I wanna be, I wanna end on a high note. So we're gonna talk about my lowest rated book and that was Memorial by Brian Washington. This follows a biracial, queer couple, Mike and Benson, who are just like barely hanging on by a thread and Mike invites his mother to come and stay with them from Tokyo. She's never met Benson before. Her name is Mitsuko and shortly before Mitsuko arrives, Mike learns that his estranged father, who he hasn't seen or spoken to in like 15 years, is dying. So the day after Mitsuko arrives to stay with Mike and Benson, Mike leaves. He heads to Osaka to try and develop a relationship with his dying father. Now, I was really hooked on this premise and also the writing style in this book. Gorgeous. This is a beautifully written piece of literary fiction. However, the story, this is a complaint that I have about fantasy a lot, um, but I think it does apply to a lot of literary fiction as well. The story kind of got lost in the plot, if that makes sense. I felt like there was so much going on that there wasn't any room for anything to happen. I want my characters in the books that I read, I want them to go from point A to point B. I want them to grow as a character. I want to see their arc. I want to see how they're changing because people are constantly changing and I want to see my characters change. And that didn't really feel like it was delivered upon, nor did the premise really feel like it was delivered upon. I thought we were gonna get Benson and Mitsuko having like this weird, quirky new roommate situation where he's this black man from Houston and she's a traditional Japanese mother and they've never met before and now they're like bickering and bantering and bonding because they're being forced into a weird living situation. We got none of that. This book honestly just felt like two men who don't know why they're together, who are constantly cheating on each other for no other reason than because they don't know why they're together. There was by the end of the book, like the slightest bit of change in each of them in terms of their characters and particularly in terms of their daddy issues because they both have daddy issues. But it was less of a here's your character arc and more of a here's the whole book and in the last hour of the audiobook, we're gonna shuffle a little bit to the left. That's that was all the change we really got for these characters. So I wasn't I wasn't super jazzed about this one. I gave it a two star review. It was very disappointed. Beautifully written, no story. And then my highest rated, like I said, I had three five star reviews. One of which I'm not gonna talk about too much because I actually started reading it in December. I didn't finish it until January, but it's A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. I talked about this a little bit as like an honorable mention in my top 10 books of like my favorite reads of 2023. Honorable mention because I hadn't finished it yet, but by the time I did finish it in January, it was a five star read. I loved this one. It's got the found family, the grumpy sunshine trope, but again, in a non-romantic way and a character trope that I like to refer to as seriously unserious. Everything about this book is just fully encompassed by that seriously unserious, one of my favorites. The next of my five star reads was You Again by Kate Goldbeck. Gender bent when Harry met Sally meets the bear, if you've watched the bear at all. It's not billed as being Harry met Sally meets the bear, but I decided that it is that because our hero, our very high strung hero, Josh, is a chef. This is a hate at first sight type romance between Josh and Ari, who are respectively super duper high strung and by the book and very commitment phobic and loosey goosey. They end up circling each other for years and eventually their bickering turns 
turns to bantering and then bonding over heartbreak and like late 20s early 30s existentialism. They end up forming a true friendship that results in some painfully hot and emotionally intimate sex. To put it bluntly, that's what they have. I loved this book. I loved it so much. I loved the avoidance rep. Ari, my girl, I see you. This is also, you might not be able to tell by the cover, because of all of the orange and the yellow in the cover and the way it has been advertised as a fall book. This was advertised very much as like atmospheric autumnal romance. This is a New Year's book. This is a New Year's Eve book. Read this in December. This is a New Year's book and it's so hot and I can't even tell you anything bad about it because it's so good. This will be, this is why romance was my top genre of the quarter because I've just been trying to replicate the way I felt when I was reading this book. Hello, it is later in the day. I don't know if you can tell by the position of shadows around me or the fact that I'm no longer wearing my glasses, but I really wanted to finish this video before I lose the light and my batteries for my camera keep dying. I need to get new camera batteries. Even though I literally just replaced them a year ago, I'm baffled at how quickly my camera batteries lose juice. But anyway, I really want to talk to you about The Tiger's Wife by Taya Obrecht. This was my final five-star read for the previous quarter, and it's so beautiful. It's a literary fiction. It follows Natalia, who is a traveling physician traveling around a war-torn country in the Balkans. She's administering vaccines and other medical care, particularly to orphanages. And so while she's undertaking this like very important and kind of hardcore work, she's also confronting some kind of hardcore emotional turmoil following the death of her beloved grandfather and the kind of mysterious circumstances surrounding his death. So she ends up going on this very emotional journey where she is looking back at all of the stories he's told her over the course of her life and trying to piece together what his mindset was in his final hours and what led him to the decisions that kind of brought him to the place where he died. And again, this is just a beautifully written book. My favorite thing about it is the way that Taya Obrecht just seamlessly weaves in this like almost fairy tale narrative of the grandfather telling his stories. And when I say fairy tale, I'm not talking like Disney princess fairy tale. I'm talking like true classic kind of dark, but also hopeful fairy tales. And the thing is, he's not telling her the stories that he tells Natalia, they're not actual fairy tales within the book. They are actually the stories of his life, of his childhood, of even his ad early adulthood, but they still have this kind of dark, whimsical feel to them and definitely like dark, whimsical elements to them. Like there's one story about the deathless man and the deathless man kind of crops up from time to time throughout the grandfather's life and they all weave together so seamlessly into the narrative of Natalia on her own medical mission and her own emotional journey to learn more about her grandfather after his passing. Beautifully written, I gave it five stars, but it also felt very grounded in realism. Like even the more whimsical fairy tale element felt like something that, I mean, they felt like something your grandparents would have told you about their own life. I highly recommend this one. If you like literary fiction, if you like fairy tales, if you like dark whimsy, go read The Tiger's Wife. But those are all of these specific titles that I'm gonna talk to you about today. And I am in fact about to lose the light. So I'm gonna sign off now, but thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to see when I post new ones. And until next time, peace out Brussels sprouts.